Ready for takeoff. Red to 700. Uh huh. Armament. Uh huh. Flotation gear. All taken care of. Everything? Everything. Okay. Chocks away. <laughs> How about fuel? Nothing ever works for me. How does the old saying go? You only get out what you put in. In other words, take the time to check your aircraft properly and you get a safe ride. Don't take the time and you might get a short one. Straight down, lead balloon style. But our mechanics paid good money to look after the aircraft for us pilots. That's right. And in the main, they do a pretty good job of it. But supposing I tell you not to move, that you're perfectly safe where you are, would you believe me? I suppose so. <laughs> then you'd be wrong, wouldn't you? No matter how good the maintenance crews are, it doesn't hurt to check for yourself. You've got the most to lose. Oh, OK, OK, point taken. What comes next? I thought we'd take a look at some examples of pre-flight checking errors that actually happened. You mean somebody else copying it? That's right. Oh, lead on. Lead on. Now, for this pilot, today started like any other day. The usual briefing, the usual authorizations. A routine start to a routine day. With the paperwork out of the way, the pilot is free to do his physical aircraft checks. But the aircraft has already been checked, inspected, tested, pulled apart, put back together, kissed and cuddled by a band of highly skilled technicians. So how can anything malfunction or fall off? Oh. Amongst the most vulnerable areas are the intakes. It only needs a small stone or a piece of rag to damage an engine beyond repair. Check that the pitot cover is off. Exhaust covers off. Engine doors correctly secured. Exhaust clear. Oil level OK. And so on. Of course, the pilot can't check everything. A lot of things are sealed, and like tins of baked beans, they should be safe. It's the obvious things, like maybe a loose panel or a filler cap not properly secured that cause the most problems. Conscientious pre-flight checking is the pilot's extra insurance policy, and occasionally, like today, it pays dividends. Another aircraft is allocated. So the whole checking procedure has to be repeated. Only now time is getting short. Have to rush through it. Still, not much chance of having two aircraft US. Is there? Result, one drop load and one overtorqued aircraft and all because the pilot failed to notice that he had a full drop tank. So you see, Lionel... Lionel? No, I didn't see. But you can bet I will in the future. That you can be sure of. Then there was the phantom pilot who failed to notice that the telltale flag on his drag chute wasn't visible. Result? No chute. He had to lower his arrestor hook and take the upwind arrestor gear. And what about the pilot who noticed that the sight glass on his tail rotor gearbox was dirty, but assumed that the oil level had been checked and was OK? If a pilot is going to assume that things are OK, what's the use of having pre-flight checks at all? The pilot and the pilot alone has been fully briefed on the task, load, weather, route, nav aids, and the dozen and one other details essential to a safe flight. The ultimate responsibility is his. He must decide whether the aircraft is suitable for the task. And for his safety, the safety of his crew and the public at large, he must be the last man to check the aircraft itself. So please, check your aircraft properly. Mistakes can't be rectified after you leave the ground. As the Fleet Air Arms flight safety mascot, it's up to you, Lionel, to set a good example. Now, is everything checked out this time?
Okay, away you go. Bon voyage, happy landings, until we meet again. Come on, Lionel. Everything's A1, 100%, so what are you waiting for? Always oh, bloody checking. I've forgotten where I was going. Uh, 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 uh.